So today we're going to talk about when the music died. And when the music died refers to the plane crash that killed Buddy Holly, the big bopper J.P. Richardson, and Richie Valens. Um, that was February 3rd, 1959, and that is commonly referred to as the day the music died. Um, such young rock and roll stars taken way too soon. Uh, Buddy Holly was 22. The Big Bopper, I think, was 28 years old. And Richie Valens uh, was still a kid. He was uh, 17. And they all died in a plane crash. What is the mystery? Well, I've had people tell me, and I've read reports where they said that uh, it wasn't necessarily a plane crash, but murder. So that's what we're going to talk about today on Unsolved No More. I'm Ken Maines, and you might know me from the History Channel's Hunt for the Zodiac Killer or my 20 years investigating cold cases and unsolved mysteries. So today we're going to talk about the plane crash that killed Buddy Holly, J.P. Richardson, the Big Bopper, and Richie Valens. So what's the big conspiracy? Well, the conspiracy theorists and uh, some other people, they believe that... Um, Buddy Holly possibly killed the pilot and therefore was the reason for the plane crash that there was some sort of altercation on the plane. So let's back it up and let's go through what we know. As I always do, I want to look at victimology. You know, uh, we look at these three, four victims, including the pilot, and see if there's anything in their background that would, you know, warrant uh, this type of investigation, such as uh, uh, criminal history. You know, did they have any criminal history? Uh, was there any violence in their background? And from what I've researched and what I've investigated, I've seen zero. Uh, all three were uh, outstanding members, not only of society itself, but within their family. Um, Buddy Holly was the upcoming star I guess he's kind he kind of made it already uh, Richie Valens was more coming up but uh, Buddy Holly still had a lot of ways to go and uh, he uh, he unfortunately passed away at that like I said the uh, age of 22 which is hard to believe because he had so many uh, hit songs before he died he was brought in the same time that Elvis Presley was and I think they actually played together uh, a few times, and he had songs like Peggy Sue, um, That'll Be the Day, um, you know, so many great songs, and Richie Valens, of course, with Donna and La Bamba, which people still know and recognize, and the Big Bopper's greatest hit, you know, was Chantilly Lace, so there was nothing in these guys' background that I saw you know, that would warrant any of them to be a violent type of aggressor. Now, could they be victims? Um, certainly. Um, they have a high potential to be a victim. And by that, I mean they are famous. They have money. So, of course, they are going to have the potential to be a victim. However, uh, through my investigation on this, I, I saw none of that either. Um, so what happened that night on February uh, 3rd, 1959? Again, I want to preface this by saying I'm no expert on Buddy Holly or Richie Valens or the Big Bopper or plane crashes. Plane crashes fascinate me for whatever reason, but I'm not an expert on those per se. Um, I'm a detective and I investigate uh, suspicious activities and suspicious deaths. That stuff I can talk as an expert on. Plane crashes, no. Uh, particular facts about individuals such as Buddy Holly or Richie Valens or the Big Bopper, no. But what I do know is that they had been playing, it was the winter time and they were doing something called the, um, 
uh, winter ball festival or or something of that nature. Uh, it was a tour. And anyhow, at this night they were in Iowa. I believe it was Clear Lake, Iowa. And during this tour, they had a tour bus. And it would break down. The heaters would hardly work. And one a couple of nights before the actual plane crash, their, plane, their uh, bus broke down in negative 30 degree weather. And it was so cold that they burnt newspapers inside the bus. And they drank whiskey to stay warm, according to reports that I read. So, Buddy Hawley said, enough of this, okay? I am, after this, this set at Clear Lake, after we're done playing, I am chartering a plane, and I am flying to do laundry, to get in the warm, take a bath, you know, all the amenities that we take for granted nowadays. Um, so originally it was Buddy Holly, uh, I believe one of his band members, Tommy Alsop, and uh, I believe Waylon Jennings, who became a, a legendary outlaw country singer who I enjoy immensely. Uh, he was playing bass for Buddy Holly, yeah, that blows my mind, but uh, it was originally going to be, I believe, those three plus the pilot. But before, as fate would have it, before they all climbed on board, I believe that um, Tommy Alsop um, did a coin toss with Richie Valens and to give up his seat on the plane because Richie wanted to go, you know, get warm and do all those things that Buddy wanted to as well. And Tommy flipped the coin and... Fortunately for Tommy and unfortunately for Richie, uh, Richie won that coin toss, and I believe Richie won that coin toss by calling heads. And that's why I always choose tails every time I flip a coin. But um, so Richie is now on that plane with the pilot, with Buddy, and with Whalen. Well, now Whalen, in good graces, gives up his seat to the big bopper who wasn't feeling well and wanted to get to the doctors. So that's how the plane occupants ended up being what it was. So you went from Buddy and some you know backup players in his band to the three headlining stars of this tour. And if that isn't fate, I don't know what is. But they board this plane and at 12.55 a.m., they take off. And the owner of the plane is actually there, and he's in the tower, and he sees it. And it's a blizzard out. It's not good flying conditions. And he says, the owner, that he kind of sees this immediately after the plane takes off. It kind of is just slowly going down right away. Now, he doesn't know if that's an optical illusion uh, or not, but he, he makes that. Um, observation well <clears throat> a few uh, I don't know if it's hours <clears throat> go by um, nobody's hearing from this pilot you know they're trying to contact him they tried to contact him right away from what I believe I read and there was no contact he, he never made contact and to me as an investigator that's important um, to debunk some of these theories um, the pilot, his name was Roger Peterson. He was only 21 years of old. So think about everybody that's in this plane. You know, much like teenagers today, you know, driving in a car, they're in a plane. You have a 21 year old pilot, Buddy's 22, Richie's 17, and Big Bopper's the old man of the group in there at 28. Um, so nobody hears from the pilot. And the next morning, the owner of the plane takes another plane up. I think it was like 9.30 in the morning. And he discovers the wreckage in a cornfield in Iowa. Um, I believe they had only been in the air a few minutes before it went down. So the scene is a mangled mess. 
it looks like the right wing had dug into the ground and it tore a hole for I believe it was 57 feet and the fuselage and everything was ripped apart if you see I'll, I'll put up a picture of it um, just a mangled scene now three bodies were thrown from that wreckage buddy who was sitting up front with the pilot Richie who was in the back and the big bopper now one of the odd things about this that conspiracy theorists and other people want to bring up and it's odd to me too I guess is that the big boppers body was a lot further away from the plane than the other bodies and people have said that maybe he was trying to go for help so what they originally investigated was obviously the cause of the plane crash and what the aviation authorities determined was that it was pilot error. Um, Mr. Peterson was not qualified I guess from what I read to fly by instruments so you know I, as an amateur this is what I I'm trying to explain to you as an amateur uh, pilot you know I've took I've taken fl flight lessons and uh, so I'm a little bit familiar uh, with what they're talking about here so you know at, at night you have visual flight which you, you can see the stars you can see the ground to see the lights so you know where you're flying um, you can you can tell the difference between ground and and the the space okay so you're able to tell that but when the stars are covered with clouds with snow and there's no lights and you can't see the bottom and I'm trying to explain this in layman's terms here because you read all these big reports and they give all these big words and sometimes we don't need to just tell it to me as we're sitting at a bar drinking a beer so that's what I'm doing so at on this night you couldn't you couldn't see the stars up above and you couldn't see the ground it was just once you got up in the air everything became the same just black and when that happens you have to rely on your instruments to tell you uh, whether you're flying correctly or if you're going up or if you're going down and this from what I have read and understand is a big problem with a lot of unexperienced pilots such as uh, JFK Jr. when he crashed his airplane so that was their investigation that was their cause of the plane crash was the pilot um, got disoriented shortly after takeoff and he could not rely on his instruments because he was not certified um, on those and he ended up you know flying right into the ground at over you know 100 200 miles an hour killing everybody on impact um, there there I did read a report that somebody had stated that they believed that it wasn't quite pilot error that the the wings were iced up and young uh, Roger Peterson the pilot was trying to land that plane safely um, and that was the reason he wasn't answering any calls because he was too busy trying to save everybody's life and that very well could be I will not say that that did not happen because I don't think we we could know that but what I do know is this uh, two months later after the plane crash you can imagine there's debris still everywhere um, and they clean up as much as they can but things are getting thrown from that plane crash and two months later in the spring when the snow thaws and everything people are out there this gentleman finds a gun now we have a conspiracy because when they run that gun who does it come back to buddy holly so everybody cannot believe that that pilot killing three of the biggest music stars of the day 
was disoriented and he crashed. End of story. They can't believe that. Something else had to have happened on that plane. Now we know what it is. Buddy Holly shot and killed the pilot in some sort of argument. Come on! Are you serious? This has probably got to be the worst conspiracy theory I've ever heard. First off, why would he kill the pilot when he's in the air? Because that's the sense he might as well took the gun and shot himself. Because that's what he's doing. You know, people will say, well, he flew, he flew some planes before he could land that plane. Oh my goodness. If you really believe that, you have some issues and you should check yourself in to the nearest mental ward. Because that did not happen here. Buddy Holly was known to carry a pistol in his shaving kit. You know why? Because he always had large amounts of money on him. That's how you got paid. You got paid in cash or you got paid by a check. But he always had cash on him and he would carry it. So he doesn't want to get robbed. He protects himself. So I read somewhere that somebody said, well, they found a bullet hole in the pilot's seat. No, they didn't. Who, who's ever making up these rumors? Just please stop. Because all you're doing is you're ruining a man's leg. It's this man. You see that? Buddy Holly. Okay? He, he's not a murderer. And some will say, well, he had an argument. And he was overheard having an argument with uh, his girlfriend, you know, right before he, he took off on that plane. And that drove him to... Com Come on. Really? Really? You can have an argument with anybody you want. It doesn't mean that it's going to drive you to kill somebody. Especially when you're flying on in a plane in a blizzard. And you're going to shoot the pilot. Yeah. Sometimes th those things, they, they certainly just, they make me laugh. So anyhow, in 2007, the Big Bopper's son wants him exhumed and not because he believed there was foul play but because as I said earlier the distance that the big bopper was found from the plane he thought maybe that he had crawled to try to get help and they exhumed him and it was remarkable from the reports that he was in pristine condition and it was the first time that his son had seen him like this. So he sat there and he, you know, he had some moments with his father that he, you know, didn't know. And I think that's very special. And I, for some reason, I'm not a big fan of exhuming bodies. Um, but in this purpose, and it seemed like it gave the son closure of some sort. But the results of it was there was no bullet holes in the Big Bopper. And he certainly did not crawl for help as every bone in his body was shattered. And he died on impact, just like the other uh, three individuals. If you read their autopsy reports, which I have, you will see that they were their, their bones were sh broke broken, shattered twice over. There was just, they died on impact. It's a plane crash, okay? Um, you don't walk away from them very often, except for Leonard Skinner, some of them. Rest in peace, Ronnie Van Zandt, Cassie Gaines, and Steve Gaines, and Dean Kilpatrick. Um, but there was no struggle on that plane. And now people will say, well, how do you know? You weren't on that plane. I had someone just comment uh, yesterday on, on the Jim Morrison um, overdose. They say, you don't know. You weren't there. You're right. I wasn't there. But I can go off of experience and looking at, you know, victimology, the crime scene. There's no bullet holes in any of the victims. Okay. There's no bullet holes in any of the fuselage, and it doesn't make sense. 
That's what you got to use is common sense. Why would Buddy Holly, and what, did he just have a, a fit of rage within five minutes of taking off? Probably less than that. That he's going to pull his gun out and turn around and threaten, you know, Richie Valens, who, by all accounts, didn't have a mean spirited bone in his body. What could have Richie Valens have done to Buddy Holly that was so uh, horrible? To make Buddy pull out a gun. What could the Big Bopper have done? Who was another jovial person? You know, what, they're going to fight over money, fight over receipts, uh, fight and... Go away. Please go away if you believe that. That did not happen. Buddy's Holly's gun was found because he carried a gun with him. Now, one of the intriguing mysteries about the gun that I read, which raised a red flag to me, was that a cartridge was found spent. So somebody had fired a shot. Oh my goodness. That means Buddy Holly did shoot that gun in there at somebody. Well, if you dig a little deeper and don't read just the first page or the first sentence, read it all. The gentleman who found the gun admitted firing a shot out of that gun to see if it worked. Why did he do it? I don't know. Who, who knows? But he admitted doing it, so it explains it. So Buddy Holly didn't murder anybody on that plane. Richie Valens didn't murder anybody on that plane. There was no altercation on that plane. It was an accident. And whether that accident was caused by... Uh, disorientation, pilot error, or because it was horrible conditions and the wings iced up, I don't know. I don't, but I do know that there was no murder that took place on February 3rd, 1959, the day the music died. It did not happen. So, what I want all you to do tonight is go on YouTube. Go on iTunes, go on something, and just pick one song from each of those individuals. Buddy Holly, I would recommend, uh, let's see, let's go with, Fade Away. Play that song. Or Maybe Baby. Or True Love Ways. Pick them. You, you, you're not going to find a bad song by Buddy Holly. Listen to it. Richie Valens, Come On, Donna. Listen to Donna. And the Big Bopper, of course, listen to Chantilly Lace. And remember those three great musicians that were taken away way too early by an accidental plane crash. That's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and we put the red bed the mystery of Buddy Holly murdering somebody on the day the music died because it did not happen. Tragic plane crash uh, February 3rd, 1959 and you heard it here. Ken Maines, Unsolved No More. Take care.